I've been waiting to get my hands on this product for so long, Western Digital, but finally I've got it in my possession. And the good thing about this product, for all you people out there that are wondering, What's that, why is he so bothered about this product here? Well, this is a wireless passport. So, you know the normal Western Digital, well, have a look up there in one of the cards. I don't know if it's that side or that side, but have a look up there and watch that video of me talking about Western Digital passports, which are storage drives. And I've got one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte, four. And now we've got this one and it makes it all. Anyway, so take a look at that first and then we'll come back to this video and then you'll understand what this video is going to be about. But for people that have already watched it, this video is going to be about this. This is wireless storage. So wireless storage on a big level. This version I've got here is a two terabyte one. It's USB three powered and it's also got an adapter that you can plug into the wall and power it up and charge it. It also has six hours of battery life and you can use an SD card in it. Let's take a look and find out what it's like. Oh yeah, check out these beautiful cables, custom to any color you like, 8 pin, 6 pin, EPS connectors, 24 connectors, oh yeah, Shagmars, shut your mouth, check out their website. So looking at this Western Digital Drive, it's actually pretty cool, it's been out for a little while now and obviously um, any firmware that needs to be updated on this device has been updated. On the back you'll see some rubber feet which means it won't scratch your desk and it's kind of like shock absorbent because it'll have a mechanical hard drive in here. On the side we've got an SD card slot so you can put a micro SD card into an adapter and then use the SD card slot and transfer all your videos and pictures on the fly. So this is for field use. So this is another thing why I really want to talk about it because it's very good for video production if you're using like 128, 512 gigabytes of uh, storage on an SD card or micro SD card. You can leave it on here and you can transfer it wirelessly as well or you can connect to a laptop and it shuts the Wi-Fi down and you can have the storage going back and forwards. But as a family sort of thing, you could have like your pictures on there that you've taken, a bit of video and a bit of data or whatever you've got on there, some files. You stick it an SD card in there from using it from, I don't know, a computer or a laptop or hybrid that's got an SD card slot. Use it from here, straight onto another desktop PC or have it from here and then connect this via USB. And uh, yeah, you're ready to go. It's got so much good well, it's got so much functionality about this little product. The fact that it's got um, an indication here to show you about the power usage. So when it's blue, it means it's very, uh, it's like 100%. If it's green, it's like 75%. If it's orange, it's 50%. Red, and it's, and it's charging. And uh, it's also got another indicator here to say whether the Wi-Fi is on and off. And it also boots up like a normal computer. It's got mechanical drive in there. On the side here at the top, it's got power button to turn it on. Then you've got an port for USB, so this USB 3, so it's going to be quite fast, up to 5 gigabits per second of data transfer speed, and you've got your Wi-Fi on and off as well, so you can use this with a phone, laptop, hybrid sort of a computer, which is like a laptop and the tablet mixed together, or you could just use it for a laptop and it switches to Wi-Fi off straight away, or you can use it in the field as well, so you can use it to play videos back if, if you've got your phone you can watch videos straight from the device as well it's got six hours of charge so that's pretty cool so i'm going to introduce the shiba as well into this video because it's an sd or so it's an sd card and the sd card which i'm going to take out this little packaging right now and i'm going to use it into the wireless passport so you can see what i'm talking about ouch that really hurt and uh it's a good thing about this passport as well. It comes with a lot of uh, security measures as well. So like if you're pretty used to having a computer, you can actually, you know like when you're setting up Wi-Fi and stuff like that, you need to put passcode in stuff. Well this does this as well. So I've got the Toshiba 64 gig card and I can just place it into the side here. And if I've got video and music on that SD card, I can then play it back on my phone or a tablet or a laptop. Or I can connect this up and connect it to a PC and go, I'm, I'm ready to go. Now if I'm in the field and I've taken some pictures or video on a camera, then I could just easily put it in here 
and I could store it on the two terabytes that's already stored on it. Well, two terabytes storage space that's um, with this device, which is really cool. So there's so many different options that you can use this actual My Passport for anyone. It's for people that are professionals. It's for people that's not professionals. It's people that just want to transfer data back and forth at a high speed. Or it's someone that just wants to sit in the car for six hours. As I say, they're driving very far. You can have it for the kids. You can have a couple of, uh, you can have a passport. Go in with a laptop or two laptops at the same time, going with uh, data back and forth, and you can have your mobile device. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect with my phone and show you how easy it is to connect. So I'm going to turn it on by holding the power button at the back. So this is me booting up, so it's got a white LED at the moment, and you've got to wait quite a few seconds. And it's vibrating in my hand because obviously it's a mechanical hard drive that's in here. So it should take about around 25 seconds, 30 seconds. So we've got orange light saying it's at 50% at the moment, and a blue light to say that it's Wi-Fi active. So I get my phone, and I just basically look and search for the passport, and then I connect to it. So I've got everything I need and when you go to download the app you're going to definitely need something like a CR2, a file that can read different file names, so different file formats. So obviously the Canon 5D Mark III has got um, a different file sort of reader what the 600D has got and so on and so on and like different data files. Now so I had to download that before I could actually use this. Now I'm in um, the cloud storage thing like that and I'm going to just click on, I've took three pictures and a little video so you can see what it's like. So the Wi-Fi is on and everything like that. And I'm just going to click on the picture. And this is how long it takes, obviously, um, for the picture to actually come up on the screen. As you can see, it come up really nice, the picture. So that is from 600D straight ahead. and straight ahead straight away that you can have an actual look and you can check out the quality of the picture you can zoom in and see if you've uh, it's a little bit overexposed or if there's anything that's kind of wrong with it so you can check it on your phone or a tablet device and stuff like that but you can't flip between the two so now i've taken a few pictures there we're going to go into video real quick and this is how long it takes so Hopefully, it don't take too long. Well, we've got a Western Digital Passport X here, and um, hmm. this is just to show you, like, I can get SD card, stick in the camera, stick it into the passport. Not this one, that one. <laughs> So that's what the kind of quality you're dealing with. So it hasn't lost any quality straight from the uh, the 600D. I've put the SD card into my passport on the side here, and it just shows that you can do things on the fly and use it as professional use, or you can use it for home use. It does have the Wi-Fi network uh, qualities of just basically, um, when it comes down to networking, you don't want anyone just to override your Wi-Fi. You can have it on a hotspot so everyone else can look at it at, or you can have it as a normal network with a Wi-Fi password and stuff like that and no one will be able to get into it. It's really quite cool. Anyway, this is the end of the review. This is going to be bench test against my cloud. Ugh. So I want to know like what I can do with this. I want to know if I can actually um, I don't know, if, can I actually compare it? This is quite slow compared to this, but it's got great functionality of a passport that hasn't got any functionality at all. You can use it as a dead um, storage device and then have it going back and forth and stuff like that. And you can turn it on and you've got Wi-Fi and you've got battery and then you can stream and you've got network codes and stuff like that. Obviously, the MyCloud is going to have a lot more incorporated into uh, that device, but I want to see if there's that much difference with it. So this could be in another video. Uh, anyway, if you like that video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, leave a thumbs down. Ask me a question about the actual uh, products that I've reviewed today or anything to do with computer technology and stuff, and I'll happily get back to you. And watch out for the next video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.